everyone. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Misty Doan with the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I hope you are having a fabulous Tuesday. I'm really looking forward to today's project. I've had this idea in my head for quite some time that I wanted to make a wall hanging to hang outside on my front porch for the holidays. You know, you see those wooden welcome signs. Well, I decided I would make one that says cheer for Christmas. So you can see it hanging up over here. And we've got this really cute little hanger that um, I added the tabs that you could hang it from. Uh, so let me show you how we did this. This is a spin off the alphabet quilt that I made earlier this year. And so if you have that pattern, um, it's all based on the exact same blocks, but we also have a printable for you that gives you exactly what you're going to need for this project. So be sure to get that in the link below and it will walk you through step-by-step step, um, all of the goodies that I'm going to explain. So to make this project, you're going to need one charm pack and I used Farmhouse Christmas, which is by Echo Park Paper Company for Riley Blake Designs. It's a beautiful Christmas line. You're also going to need a half yard of your background fabric. That's this um, cream color that I used here. That's for your sashing and this first little inner border, the inside to separate our letters. Um, and then you're also going to need one and a quarter yard uh, of backing fabric and a half yard for your outer border. And that will take care of everything that, that we need to make this. Now this collection I used has been really popular, so it's kind of in limited supply, but I wanted to be sure and show you another great option that's available. This is Home Sweet Holidays by Deb Strain for Moda, and it has a lot of the same look and feel as this collection I used here. So I just wanted to let you know, you don't have to use the exact same collection. This is gonna be beautiful in any holiday collection that you choose. So let's just dive in. To begin, we're going to cut our charm pack down into two and a half inch squares. And so I just always have a few stacked up and then I'm just going to use my two and a half by eight inch ruler and I'm gonna cut these down, whoops. There's my first one, line them back up and then I can lay my ruler this way. And because I know this ruler is two and a half inches wide, they are all ready to go. And I just um, went through my whole pack like that and made piles. So I have kind of this um, dark green, black, red, and this lighter green. And I just um, made them like that so I had easy access to the different colors. And then we're going to also need to make a few half square triangles. So from our um, background fabric, you're also going to want to cut some two and a half inch squares, which is what I've got here. So now, Let's just go ahead and make the letter C. And so to do that, we're going to need four half square triangles, because you can see we do a half square triangle on each of these outside edges to create that angle, the shape of the letter. And so we need four for the letter C. So let's go ahead and make those. So I'm just gonna pick a few random prints here. There we go. And then I'm gonna pair those up with the background square. And we are going to sew exactly corner to corner. So if you want to draw a line, you can, you can press a line, but I am going to just use the diagonal seam tape on my machine and we're gonna sew point to point, corner to corner. So let's go ahead and make a couple of these. So you just wanna make sure your fabric is nice and lined up and that first point you're gonna line up exactly with your needle. And then I'm gonna put the opposite point on the red stitch line of my diagonal seam tape. And then, oops. And then as long as I keep my point on that line all the way through, I know I'm gonna be exactly corner to corner. Now I can put the next one in right behind just like that. And then I'll trim those apart. And let's go ahead and cut off the excess, leaving our quarter inch seam allowance. 
So that will be waste unless you want to save all your little tiny half square triangles. You know, I'm not opposed to projects with tiny pieces. So this would be a great way to just add a secondary line of stitching before you cut these apart. Otherwise we can just put those in the scrap bin or save them for, um, you know, little stash buster projects. All right, so let's go ahead and set these and press them back. So we have finished half square triangles that end up um, the same size as our squares. So we're looking for two and a half inches. And I like to press to the dark side here. There we go. And the reason we do that is so the seam doesn't show through our lighter background. So if you hear people talk about pressing to the dark side, that's the reason. Sometimes if your fabric is going the other way, you can just see a bit of a shadow through that lighter background fabric. And so I tend to always press mine to the dark side. All right, so now let's lay out our C to get started. So to begin with, we're gonna take um, our half square triangle that we made and then one solid two and a half inch square and then another half square triangle. And we are just going to start mixing this up and using different colors. And so then we're gonna do, let's see, it looks like we need four solid two and a half inch squares going down. And I'm just gonna go through my stack and make sure I've got some variety here. There's so many cute prints in this line. There we go, so there's four. And then I can use this one. And then we need one more here oh, and then there. And then we have one more solid here and here. I think I'll use this guy. And then we're gonna fill in these empty spaces with our background squares. So let me just go ahead and add that. And that's why I like having a bunch of these cut and ready to go, because I find it really helpful to just go ahead and lay each of these out. So you can see how the C is gonna come together. Let's go ahead and sew a few of these. We'll just stitch this right up. So I'm gonna start by taking my first row and I'll just keep it close by so I can reach over and grab the next one when I'm ready. But I'm gonna put my half square triangle next to my solid two and a half inch square and we'll sew that down. And then I will open this up and put my other half square triangle. I do wanna make sure that they're going opposite direction so I'm getting that kind of um, rounded shape at the top. So you can see they're, they're going different directions there. That's gonna give me the look that I want with that first row. Then we'll line these up and sew our quarter inch seam. There we go, and there's our first row. You can see how quickly that goes together. And then we're just gonna keep on keeping on down the rest of these rows. So let's stitch these up really quick because I wanna have a whole block ready for you guys. Okay. All right, so I have all the rows together for my first letter, the letter C. And so now let's go ahead and press these. And I do like to um, press my seams in opposite directions so that they'll nest up when I go to put these rows together. So this first row, I'm gonna press them all to the left. And then the next one to the right. And I'll just do that back and forth and back and forth. And by doing that, my seams are gonna be going opposite ways I'm gonna trim this long thread there. And that's gonna make it so easy when I take these rows to the machine to line up my squares and have them uh, match up nicely, which is what we want. So if you're trying to press to the left, you can hold the left side of your fabric up in the air and just slowly roll across. Don't push too hard or pull too hard 
and that will make the seams go to the left and the opposite if you want to hold up the right side then your seams will go to the right all right and those are ready to go so let's start down at the bottom here and we're going to lay these together and i want to make sure you guys can see what i'm talking about with these nested seams so because i've pressed them in opposite directions when they meet up here you can see how this seam's going this way and this seam's going this way and they just sort of lock into place and every single juncture because we've taken the time to press is going to do that now and so it's just really helpful if you have a lot of places to line up seams to make sure that you um, do some pressing management. It's worth the time. So to get started, I'm going to you know, take a few stitches there and then I can lift this up and then I'll sew to that point and then make sure this next point is nested where I want it and we can just sew down and make sure all of our blocks are lining up. Now we'll open this and add the next one and continue all the way up our letter. And because we've taken the time ahead of time to press, we don't have to fight with those seams at the machine. Just check again, make sure that they're nesting the way you want. And we'll just continue until this block is all done and I'll meet you back here. All right, so there is our letter. All my rows are stitched together. And now I just wanna give that a nice press. So it's gonna lay nice and flat. So each of our letter blocks should measure 12 and a half inches tall and six and a half inches wide unfinished. Let me just triple check. Yep, that looks exactly right. So those are your unfinished measurements. And so now let's talk about how we set the letters together. I have an H made here. So we can just go ahead and put two together to start to give you guys an idea. So I'm gonna cut, um, or I have cut I should say, some inch and a half strips. And then we're gonna cut those into six and a half inch um, segments from there. So let's go ahead and trim off our selvage edge and then measure over. Whoops, I missed a piece there. Let's get this lined up again. We'll measure over six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And these one and a half by six and a half inch rectangles are what I'm going to put at the top and in between and the bottom of each of my letters. So we're going to do sashing um, all the way top to bottom. And so you can see here on my little project, this is that one and a half inch strip that runs right here and then in between each of these letters all the way down to the bottom. So let's go ahead and cut a few more and then we can add these and sew them together. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. There we go. And let's just go ahead and add the top and then in between the letter to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. So here's my one and a half by six and a half. I'm going to lay that at the top of my C. Make sure I'm all lined up where I need to be. And then we're going to sew that with a quarter inch seam make sure our end is lined up as well. Now we can turn and we can go ahead and add that same size strip to the other end. Just take a few stitches and then make sure you're lined up all the way down. And then this one, we can, you can either go ahead and go press it, or I just like to kind of finger press it here at the machine. And then we'll add our H that I've already got ready to go. 
And you would just continue in this same way with all your letters, whatever word it is that you're spelling. And you can see how easy that is to put that little one and a half inch strip in between. There we go. So now you see our letter has some, letters have some separation. It makes it easy to read, which is what we want. So I'll just press that back. And like I mentioned, you would just keep going. And so then this here that just runs vertically on the sides of our letters. We, it doesn't have a top and bottom, but this is your inner border. And these are two and a half inch strips um, that are on either side of your letter block. And then this is a three inch outer border that we finished it up with. But I want you guys to notice the little tabs at the top that are hanging this on this really cute little snowflake hanger. This is what I've hung mine on. So you can see it here. It's got this great little um, snowflake detail and a little wooden dowel. And I will show you just how quick it is to add the tabs. I actually made a little bonus project because I thought this fabric was so cute. So I just made this little wall hanging. Let me show you. And I just made it using a half square triangles. So my charm squares, I just, let me see, where'd my piece go? Here you go. You can see I put a five inch background square and a five inch charm square together. And I just drew a line and then sewed a quarter inch from either side. And then I went ahead and pressed those and squared them to four and a half. And then I used my half square triangles and laid them out in this cute little star. And I quilted this myself. These are just really simple half square triangle star. But I want to make sure that you guys know how to put these tabs on because it's a great way, whether you're hanging a full quilt or you're hanging a wall hanging, um, to just add a little bit of extra detail. So to make the tabs, you're gonna cut two and a half inches by five inches um, four times out of your rectangle. I like to use at least four tabs just so that whatever the project is hangs really even. Um, I just don't want it to droop in the center. And so we're gonna take this over to the pressing mat and we're gonna turn the two long sides under a quarter of an inch or about that, just eyeball it. But that's what I'm shooting for. So I've got that first side done and then I'll turn and do the other side. And I'm just gonna give that a press. And once those are turned under, under excuse me, I'm just going to fold it in half long ways and give it another press. And that's just gonna put those raw edges inside. And then we can take this to the machine and we're just gonna top stitch on either side so it looks nice and finished and it will enclose those little edges that we turned under. So this is uh, much less than a quarter inch I'm using, more like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm gonna go down that side that has the open ends first. And then I'll turn it around and go back the other way. So that second row of stitching is purely decorative, but I think it's a nice touch. All right, and I have the rest of these already made and ready to go. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna flip our project, whatever it is that you're hanging to the the wrong side. So the backing is facing you and we're gonna grab some pins. And I like to measure in from the outside at least an inch and a half. I find that that gives me um, plenty of room so that I'm not gonna catch this in the binding. And so I'm just using my little ruler here and I've got it on the inch and a half line and I've folded this in half, these tabs that I made and I'm gonna put the first one right there. I'm gonna be sure to pin far enough down that when I go and add this binding, I'm not gonna sew through the pin. So you can see my pins are well out of where I'm gonna stitch the binding later. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So measure over an inch and a half. And if you're doing a bigger project, you might wanna come in two or three inches before you put your first tab. It just depends. But this is the same thing I did on the cheer wall hanging. I followed this exact same method. 
And so we're in that inch and a half with our raw ends pointing up to the edge of the project. We'll put a pin in there. And then we can measure over, I like to measure over usually three is a good number. And I just kind of eyeball it. So if I do three from there and three from there, I think that's going to divvy it up just about right. That's going to look great. Okay. And so then we'll just put a pin in this one. Check again, measure over three from the edge of that last one we put in. And we can add this here. There we go. So those are all pinned in place now on the back side of my wall hanging quilt, whatever project you're making. And so then let's take our binding now. And I just want to show you guys on camera how I do this because once I have these pinned in, I'm just going to add my binding just like normal if I were going to hand bind it. So that means I'm going to sew my binding to the top because I will go back and finish this by hand. If you were going to machine bind it, you would do the opposite. You would start on the back and then bring it around to the front. But I'm going to start on the front. So let's go ahead and we'll just start stitching this binding. I don't like to start on the side that has the tabs because I want to make sure that that side has a full line of machine stitching. So I'm actually going to begin my binding here on this other edge that doesn't have any tabs on it. So let's do that. Make sure we are good to go. I like to back stitch just a little bit there. And we'll come down to this corner. All right, and then I keep my needle down, turn, and I sew right off into the corner. And then we can fold back at a 45, make a nice corner for our binding. Make sure it's all lined up. There we go. And so this is the side now that has the tabs on it. And so you're going to notice, you just take your time. We've got those pinned in place. And our, our pins that we put in are completely out of the way of where we're stitching because we're just doing that quarter inch. And so we're just going to take our time. And you can see the machine sounds a little different when we're sewing through all those layers, but it sews through it beautifully. I just want to get to this other side so you guys can see. There we go. And again, I'm going to sew into that corner. And I'm going to make this corner before I show you guys how this is going to look. There we go. That laid down beautifully. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go back and finish adding the rest of the binding to this later, but I just want to show you guys how this looks once I turn it. So let's flip this back around and take these pins out. And you guys can see that we've caught all of those tabs in our stitching. And so now they're attached. They're attached to our project. And so we can just go ahead and take our um, binding, and I like to go ahead and press it back makes it easier for me to work with. And now when I do that and I go to hand bind it, you can see it's going to cover those raw edges of the tabs, just like it's going to cover the raw edge of our project. And so you can either just let those flip up when you hang it, but I like to go ahead and bind all the way around. And then I just come back and I add a few little hand stitches to tack those up. And you can see on the project here, if you look super close, there's just some tiny little hand stitching going along there to hold those together. And so we'll get a nice detail shot for you of that. But that is really it. And I wanted to make sure that I talked a little bit about that tab uh, process because it's very, very easy. It's not difficult to do at all. And of course, if you had a larger um, rod that you were hanging this on, you might need to make your rectangles a little bit longer, but I do want to show you how these hangers that I used work. They come in many different patterns. They're really, really cute. So let's just pull this out of the package. 
and I'll show you. So this one's the little snowflake like I used. And then the end, you just kind of pull and it pops out on one side. And so then your project would just slide through those tabs and then you would pull and pop that right back in there. And then you could hang it from that. Super, super cute. Um, I also want to mention, because this is a, um, a nice long length, this finishes up at 15 by 71 inches. This is perfect. We have our um, Missouri Star uh, Quilters Best Blend runner size. And so this is 120 by 36. So this is like ideal if you want to quilt this yourself. So you could always grab that. But again, I love this charm pack. I think it's perfect for the holidays and I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Hope it brings you a little bit of cheer and you have a great week until next time. I'll see you then.